Hello and welcome to Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm Peter Lavelle. Um, I have the great privilege to have Patrick Armstrong on. He is a, um, a retired Canadian diplomat um, and a extraordinary Russia watcher. Um, and I think that you know Patrick leads the pack in being contrarian when it comes to uh, media coverage of Russia, and that's why he's so enjoyable. And plus. Patrick, you do have that Canadian sense of humor um, that you like to employ uh, with great devastation, I must say, because not only do I think you're a great expert on Russia, you're a great expert on um, media. And actually, this is why George and I started this platform here, is to discuss media. So, and of course, we have George Samuel. Okay, Patrick, let me, let, me, let me start with you. We had three and a half years, basically four years, of this um, uh, Russiagate hoax. But the difference now, if a new administration comes in in January, is that the perpetrators of this hoax will have the keys to the kingdom. How do you think that's going to translate into policy? They, can they just say, oh, well, we've got to change our position, never mind, we've got to drop it. I mean, it seems to me that they're, it's almost they're forced to carry this um, uh, forward because they, th this is one of the ways that they denigrated the, the incumbent and won the election, that he is a traitor in Putin's puppet and all that. I point out in the, in the, the I think George was at the first debate or the second debate, Biden called Trump a, a Putin um, a puppet. So, I mean, he brought it all the way to the, the election here. What are your thoughts on that, Patrick? Carla, you're asking, you're asking about logic here. Don't forget, Peter, this was the most secure election in human history. <laughs> Nobody fiddled with it, not right. the Russians, right. not that Donald Trump should get any credit, God forbid, for making this the tightest election in human history. I don't know what they're going to do, but yes, of course. Um, Stroke and all these guys are great heroes. They saved the Republic from the foul Russian beast. And um, I mean, obviously, Russia interfered with the last election, but not with this one. Mm. Maybe they'll just, I don't know, maybe they'll just gas on about something else. Now, if Trump gets in. Did you see, by the way, I was fascinated with this. Um, what's his name on Fox News, the talk guy? Had a thing on China. He's found some video of a Chinese uh, academic. That was Tucker. We got, people, yes, we got people running the U.S. for us. I thought, gee, Willikers, in me, in me, Chinese are going to be Americans with the Americans have done to every Biden gets in or Harris gets in. I don't know what they're going to do, but obviously Russiagate was true. Obviously, Stroke and the rest of these guys are great heroes, but maybe we're not going to talk. Well, Russia's still going to be the enemy, isn't it? Well, wouldn't you say China owned Biden? Sorry, Patrick, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you say that um, it's actually within their DNA, uh, Russophobia, that this has been a long-standing theme of um, the kind of people that are going to come in. I mean, we're thinking of Anthony Blinken, uh, we're thinking of Jake Sullivan, um, and uh, they, 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 are, that's, they are seriously Russophobic. Hard to believe that they're not going to get into some kind of a confrontation with Russia at a fairly early stage in the administration. What do you think, Patrick? Well, I think what you're going to see in the United States is a race between the collapse of the U.S. and going and doing more bombing. Whoever is sitting in the White House in, um, is going to, uh, half the population is going to think he's there illegitimately. Yeah. What happens to the U.S. if you have a Portland in every city all the time? I don't think the, the U.S. military will be divided also. They'll have to come home. Um, so that's your race. The complete civil war is probably too strong a word, but serious civil strife heading towards civil war and the tendency to go out and bomb the bejesus out of everybody. There's not that there's many people left to bomb, if you think of it. That's very true. And it's Patrick, not as if the Patrick, bombings are so think, successful. Don't you think, though, just because of what you just said here, um, the, the, the gridlock is, is um, uh, frozen over more than, more than ever before. Uh, if the Republicans hold uh, the Senate, then, then you know, Biden has no way to get an agenda through. And, and, and because of that, 
his, the, the only realm the executive has is foreign policy, and we've seen how uh, promiscuous presidents have been by u in using um, military force around the world. I mean, and when you have uh, Lincoln and you have people like Sullivan, they're going to say, Mr. President, there's only one thing you can do. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay, because, you know, it, it goes back to, I, 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 um, it'll never leave my mind when that illegal missile attack on Syria that Trump ordered early in his administration and NBC News showing the, the missile leaving the, the, the ship saying, look at those beautiful missiles. One of the most disgusting things ever said uh, on cable television. But that's exactly what they're going to do. They're gonna to try to you know, um, rally everyone around you know, how evil the Ayatollahs are and how uh, uh, evil Putin is. And, uh, and finally, give me a drum roll. Assad must go, okay? I'm, I really worry about that. I do too, I do too. I mean, to quote Yosef Vissarionovic, the struggle intensifies. Hey, you know that reference? Mm -hmm. Because then I'm starting to quote it more and more and thinking about it more and more. As you're going down the toilet, you swim faster, you splash more, all this kind of thing. Absolutely, the US is going down the drain. There's a million different reasons not least of which is this political nightmare they've got themselves into. And they could very easily try and get out of it by bombing somebody. On the other hand, here's another question for you. Joe Biden has to go, right? He's not capable. That's going to be embarrassing. He's got to be there for the inauguration. My God, what would happen if he... When are they going to... When are they, what's the article of Article 25? Right. When are they going to do him? That's going to occupy a lot of space inside the administration. I think, I hope, that they're going to be so riven with internal discord that they won't go out and try and get rid of Assad. But you're right. All these guys are bombers. They all hate Russia. They've all been vindicated. They all know that the correct answer to all problems is to go and bomb somebody. Yeah. But and I they hate everybody. Sorry, I mean, I was just saying that that has been the uh, record of uh, democratic administrations when they were uh, stymied by uh, a Republican controlled Congress. I mean, if you think of uh, Bill Clinton from 1994 onwards, he suddenly started focusing disastrously on foreign policy and, uh, you know, what's the one area that he could get in involved in? And that was the Balkans. Uh, and then you saw this with Obama. And they even made a movie about it. Yes, that's, yeah. They even that's, made a movie yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and then you had the same thing with um, Obama, uh, well, first it was Libya, and then of course he then moved on, because again, he lost, in 2010, he lost uh, the House of Representatives, and 2011, he bombs Libya, and then, you know, and he, he starts getting involved in Syria, he starts getting involved in uh, Ukraine, and it's just an absolute fiasco. So you'd have to believe that this will be the pattern, um, particularly as really a Biden administration has no mandate at all. Let I me mean, leave aside Trump's challenges. I mean, this has been an, it was an absolute disaster for this election. I mean, the whole blue wave that they were expecting <laughs> never materialized, it was a red wave. So you'd have to think, well, how, how else can he get out of this? And particularly with, uh, if as you say, and I think that's right, that he's not gonna be around for very long in the Oval Office, Kamala Harris looks to me a kind of carbon, an absolute perfect case of the humanitarian interventionist. I mean, you can see that's her mentality. Hey, how can we use our bombs in order to um, have transgender bathrooms in some country or other? Listen, George, I can't, I mean, I can't argue with you. What you're saying is absolutely possible, maybe even probable, God help us all. Because it's not as if the Americans are actually very good at war. Right. You know, they spend all their time at war, but they're actually pretty, pretty bad at it. Right. Good point. I mean, the Brits are good at war, the Russians are good at war, but the Americans suck at war, really. You know, and, one uh, of the other things, one of the added things here, I, I think your description of this um, uh, chaos that has been brought about by this it, un unbelievably screwed up election, which I, I'm sorry, I have to say, this was baked in with all of these ballots floating around. I mean, you know, they, somebody well, had, it's it's an obvious th fraud. this could go wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry? It's an obvious fraudulent election. 
And you have to be an idiot not to see that it's fraudulent. But Patrick, it. let's add on to it. I mean, I, I don't know how many people watched as closely as George and I did, uh, and yourself with this Russiagate hoax, but a lot of people were waiting for the Durham report. They were waiting to find out how all of this nonsense started. That's going to be delayed. It most likely would be um, um, brushed under the carpet uh, and, um, and the, as being a special counsel, he can't be fired. Of course he can be fired, okay? I mean, anyone that says that it doesn't, you know, are not serious people. My point is here is that we, we have this unresolved hoax. Who perpetuated it? I think we all know, okay, but I'd like facts. I'd like a report, okay? And then we have this botched election. I mean, how many more ways do you need to alienate half the country, okay? I mean, not only did they get away with Russiagate, now they're getting away with this election. And if, you, if this isn't going to create such a chasm, it, I, I can't see how we go back. I, I don't understand how these people in power think. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Pyrrhic victory. They got it. They got the, the keys to the Oval White House, but what is it worth? Go ahead. I mean, it's the U.S. is it's another stage in its dissolution. But <clears throat> what we don't know is how long it's going to take for the U.S. to turn into whatever it turns into. One of the, I mean, I'm thinking about this myself. One option I can see is um, there's a hell of a lot of people who voted for Trump. We already have enough polls to indicate that close to a majority of the population think the election was a fraud. The Trump supporters certainly think it's a fraud. One of the options that occurs to me is they just opt out. They stop yeah. paying taxes. They stop paying any attention. Um, the states, they just stop paying attention to the federal government and I got a gun, come and make me. So we have a, a kind of a, a, a session that isn't formalized. Meanwhile, the Democratic Party decay into riot. It's going to be cool. We're the political quote, we need a nice oh, shit. We've uh, disconnected. I think it's, yeah. Okay. You there? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Your, your picture isn't too great, but you, well, your, your audio is still coming through a bit. Okay. Did you hear me mention Plever? No, go ahead. Repeat. Go ahead. Okay, Plevel was the interior minister of Russia in 1900 or something, and he's supposed to have said, what Russia needs is a nice little war, yeah. which of course turned out to be not such a nice little war. And there's certainly a lot of people who, and as George was saying, we're going to distract you by bombing the bejesus out of Libya. But who's left the bomb? <laughs> Right. You know, have a, let's have another surge in Afghanistan. I don't think that's going to sell. Let's um, talk about how Assad must go. That brings Russia into the picture, and that's a bit scary now. Um, who's left to overthrow? Maduro. Okay, let's overthrow Maduro. Does anybody in the United States really care? Well, I mean, yeah, well you, 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 you forgot right. Iran. I mean, Iran's back on the uh, on the front burner again. I mean, with all of the all all of this fear mongering coming out of the media, and of course, you know, all of these uh, organizations around the lobby, uh, they're just churning it up again. I mean, it was really George. You pointed this out to me is that Netanyahu flipped on a dime. You know, what, what, uh, oh, congratulations, Mr. Biden. Okay, he got ahead of his skis as they usually do. Okay, no, but you're. But I, I do worry about that because it's going to be something big. I mean. I don't think, you know, another Panama is going to do it. It's going to be Iran. It's got to be the big one there where there's, at least in, in, in the, the way George and I were brought up, I mean, it's part of our DNA to hate Iran. I mean, people are already preconditioned for that here. I really do worry about that. I, I actually think it's much but, more likely to be some way in which you would, they will confront Russia. I mean, it's not, I think as Patrick was saying, it's going to be, have to be something big, some small thing like uh, let's bomb Libya or let's bomb Serbia. I don't think that's going to do the job. I mean, I think the, the internal crisis, the internal contradictions, as the Marxists used to say, uh, are just too great. Uh, so you need something big. And that's why I think 
a confrontation with Russia, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Ukraine or in the Caucasus, I think that's much more likely. And remember, you know, back in the 90s, uh, the Americans got so ahead of themselves, they were actually ready to confront Russia in, in, in the Balkans. You remember there was that standoff at Pristina yeah. Airport? They were actually started, they were start, they were ready to start shooting Russian soldiers. So you can see that there, there is a kind of recklessness among uh, some of these people that uh, could get, <laughs> could get well, kind George, of nasty. George, I think you have an impeccable logic. However, the Russians might shoot back. Uh, okay. Absolutely. That's why I think it's a very, very dangerous. But they will almost certainly shoot back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Pa Patrick, is, is one it, would, go ahead, Patrick, go ahead, jump in. One would like to hope. One would like to hope that the American generals are not that stupid. Christina Airport in whatever was, okay, that was Russia on the way down. Russia today is pretty goddamn formidable. And um, you remember the Dragon Ride? I mean, I often think about this laughing. The Americans sent some troops up to the Baltics for an exercise four or five years ago and decided to parade the vehicles home through Eastern Europe rather than putting them on trains and shipping them back to Germany. This was going to show American firepower ready at your disposal. What a joke. They were eight-wheeled Canadian-made labs, light armored vehicles, armed with 50 caliber machine guns. Anybody in the audience that served in the Soviet or Warsaw Pact forces would have laughed. That's not even a BTR-80, for Christ's sake. So the Americans get home and they say, geez, woo. You better put something bigger on it. So after a rush program, they managed to get 25 millimeter cannons on them. Russians have got this stuff. Um, I've started to resume my hobby of making plastic armored vehicle models and I'm doing the current Russian ones, including this weird um, armored fighting vehicle that goes with the new tank. Holy cow, what a piece of kit that is. NATO is a paper pussycat. <laughs> Any serious confrontation with Russia, and I think of, we boast about it in Canada, the Canadian-led multinational uh, battalion group, a battle group, about a thousand soldiers all together in Latvia. The Russians aren't even going to bother with that. A thousand multinational people armed with light armored vehicles? Who cares? They'll just cruise, they're actually a whole bunch of Iskander missiles, though. Well, I mean, they, they, no, they, I, so you got to fool around with Russia, but I'd like to think there's no American general stupid enough to think it's going to be as fun as it might have been at Pristina. But Airport. if you remember, you're just following up on Patrick. I mean, do you remember when Trump launched his missiles on Syria? He cleared it with the Russians. He first of all talk, tell, told the Russians exactly what he was going to hit, give the Russians time to um, pull back so that no Russians would be hit. He was immediately attacked by Hillary Clinton and MSNBC. That shows, that proves that you were colluding with Putin uh, oh and that you were avoiding starting World War III. Now, these are the people who are now going to be coming into power. So, I, I, you know, I don't think I would expect too much common sense from these people. I mean, really what it gets down to, I mean, because, um, you know, I... I been living in this country for 22 years, okay? I've studied the Soviet Union, um, Eastern Europe, um, and I think, and George, you live in Eastern Europe, and you know Eastern Europe very, very well, and Russia. Um, you know, it, it's just, it, I always look at what they say in the media and what the reality is, and they're always very, very far apart. And the, the, the thing is, is that I agree with Patrick. I don't think American generals are that dumb, okay? I mean, um, they're, they're smart to take the gig in Afghanistan because it, it's a, it tops off your resume and then you get to go work for one of the arms companies, okay? I mean, they're smart in that sense. But to poke the bear, they're going to say, well, uh, the bear has claws and they're real and they can hurt, okay? The thing is here, it's always about in, 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 uh, threat inflation. You just keep talking it up, talking it up. Donald Trump, I mean, for all of the mistakes he's made in office, that was a very smart move on his part because he was the only adult in the room, apparently, okay? I'm not gonna start the third world war on my watch, okay? Now, you know, and, and again, we've already talked about um, uh, the acuity of, of uh, Joe Biden. So he's kind of out of the picture here. Uh, 
Kamala Harris, she's kind of out of the picture too because she doesn't know anything about it. So it gets that your sure. agency uh, consensus again here. Patrick, are they that silly? Because for the way I look at it, the Russia threat is just a huge grift, okay? Ch China is a different story, but Russia, Russia is basically wants to preserve what it has. It's a status quo power, okay? Do you think they're that foolish to play with inflation threat? Too? Because as we all agree, uh, to, if you push to a point, the Russians will react, absolutely, undeniably. Well, I think basically all three of us are pretty much in agreement. Essentially, there's a lot of fools coming in. If Biden and Harris gets in, there's a lot of fools, anti-Russian fools, who grossly overestimate American power and underestimate Russian power and Russian will. And they've been doing this consistently for 20 years, and there's no reason to think that they will stop. Yes, that is very dangerous. At the same time, the US has moved a further step into its dissolution. So as I come back to it, I, my line at the moment is it's a race. Is the US going to fall apart before it blows something up? And well, is the US going to blow itself up or is it going to blow the rest of us up? Ask me in six months. But um, yes, there's a real danger here. Now, if Trump gets in, which I would not rule out at all by any means, I hope what Trump will do is realize that he really has to drain the swamp and he has to be active about it, yeah. not just make orders. He's got to, there got to be arrests and the rest of it. And just going back a bit to what you said, Peter, huh, the um, investigation into Russia Gate, forget it, never happened. Yeah. We will never hear another word about it, no matter, no matter what. It is over, it never happened. There was no problem. It was all 100% accurate. Definitely. It was under Biden Harris, um, a special counsel, who cares? Well, you'll have a car accident if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, and I think, uh, Patrick, I mean, you make a very good point that um, uh, given the developments within the last 48 hours, um, Trump winning out in the end uh, is not uh, the only realm of possibility with Texas now uh, filing this lawsuit against um, four other states, it's gonna be hard for the US Supreme Court not to take this up because that exactly falls within their jurisdiction. So they could easily then use, take this case up along with the other case, the, the Pennsylvania case, and maybe some other case and say, okay, we're gonna rule on this election. And then you know, all sorts of things are gonna come out when, when, they, when they start looking into it. So, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, yeah but, but George, that's just the half of it because, you know, the, the media, they're going to go full blast as well and organize all of their resources here because it's their victory. They, because if they, you know, they can, they can make this claim, okay, we, we were on the right side to support Joe because he made it across the line. But if he doesn't make it across the line, they're going to say, then everyone's going to say, it's your fault you did this, or you amplified everything that was wrong about this candidate and about this election here. So, right. I mean, that's yeah. just, that's when the chaos begins. Keep going. And this time, this time they can't blame Putin because having said nothing about Putin for the past month, they can't suddenly bring Putin back. Oh yeah, yeah, Putin stole this election again. Well, it's, you know, they, they're not going to be able to make that argument. So it's, it's going to be very hard for them uh, to do anything. But the question then is, will Trump seize this opportunity that, you know, he's got this one shot to remake uh, Washington, as, as Patrick said, you know, to, you know, finally to drain the swamp, clean out the CIA, clean out the FBI, all the things that he failed to do in his first term because he was just too happy to uh, go along in order to get along. Uh, I, I don't know, but this is, you know, he may, he may seize this opportunity that he's got the second chance now. Don't blow it. Well, in, it, it's, it's very much like um, and, and when, uh, the approach to the 2016 election is that all those people in Hillary's orbit, they were uh, getting a, a new mortgage, they were moving house, moving closer to Hillary to Washington, you know, and, you know, we're going to move our kids over here and all, and, and it, all the plans were made and then Oh my God! They muffed the whole thing. Okay, uh, I, 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 and these people, these people are worse. These people are even worse than her crowd. Okay, because these people are just 
crazy grifters, okay? And then they're waiting their time, their turn to punch their ticket. And they don't want anything to screw this up. And I'm, I'm including the media, okay? So um, that all remains to be seen here, gentlemen. But what I wanted to get across in our, in our, our meeting here today is that we live in extremely dangerous times. And um, um, rhetoric can become reality if, with, if power is in the wrong hands. And that is a real potential here. And we mentioned um, uh, Anthony Blinken and, and uh, Jake uh, Sullivan and all of the rest of them. I mean, are they going to put, the, uh, 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 put, the, uh, put their words into reality? We have to be really worried um, that they uh, will do it if they come to power. Patrick, for, thank you for joining us. One last word from you before we get, wrap this up. Well, I guess I come back to my point that it's a race between the dissolution of the United States for all the various things that are happening or these crazy people starting some real trouble more than they already have. Uh, boy, what a screwed up opportunity, eh? Yeah. If you look at the neocons, what a bunch of incompetent fools. Iran is way more powerful than it ever would have been otherwise. Yeah. Russia and China are closer and closer. These guys have absolutely shot themselves in the foot and killed their own country. Yeah, and, 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 and you know what they've done, it, look at the dollar, but they've destroyed the confidence people have in the dollar. Um, they've politicized it. Um, um, uh, they've gone away from international law to, you know, uh, norms and all of this. They've did, they just, you know, they, what I really find really amazing is the, every single year there's a defense report, who are the revisionist powers? The revisionist powers are the ones that reject international law. The Chinese and the Russians and everyone else, the Iranians certainly would just like international law to be applied that will protect their sovereignty. I mean, everything you said, Patrick, and so much more, it just, it, it, it's, uh, it's one of, it'll be recorded in history as one of, as the greatest self-inflicted injury for, of a civilization in great power or in superpower. All self-inflicted, all because of ideology and greed and arrogance. Okay, now I'm. So, keep going, Patrick. I got one. I got one last thing to say to George to cheer him up. <laughs> the Roman Republic, <laughs> taking from say minus one hundred down to the uh, ascendance of Caesar Augustus, had incredible internal problems. It had the social war. It had the. Um, various military takeovers that it had invasions by this set and the rest of it, and it conquered the bejesus out of everybody. So George, you can go down at home and rise outside. So there you go, George, maybe you'll be right. And in some weird, creepy way, you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick, I can say no one's made uh, George laugh so much during one of our podcasts here. Absolutely. Patrick, thank you for joining us, George, of course, here. And if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to have Patrick on again real soon. No matter what, he's going to be back soon. Uh, much more ahead from all of us.